3,000 miles, seven famous western cities, five different states, three national parks, countless lakes, waterfalls, canyons, local farms, and small towns along the way. Join us on a journey through the great American West, from Las Vegas through Utah and Wyoming, all the way to the Canadian border of glorious Montana and down through beautiful Idaho. Time to hit the road. So the adventure begins. The first stop on our way to Park City was a creamery in the small Utah town of Beaver. It will be seriously the best roadside ice cream you'll ever have. Not to mention the unheard price of $2.50 per scoop. Plus a huge selection of local cheeses, jams and self-serve lunch counter. After the charming little town of Provo, the road up the mountain to Park City will inspire, no matter what season you choose to visit in. The gorgeous colorful foliage didn't disappoint one bit. Another local cheese farm stop? Why not? Hover Valley Cheese is rather popular in the West, and we made sure to get one of each of their unique cheddars, like cracked pepper and chive, smoked jalapeno and bacon, or lemon lavender. Park City is an amazing winter destination, but visiting in the fall can be just as rewarding. Make sure to stop by the St. Regis at Deer Valley, which is one of the four remaining U.S. resorts where trails sculpted from the mountains are reserved only for skiers. Enjoy handcrafted cocktails, a snack, or even better, a champagne savoring brunch in a terrific atmosphere with a prestigious view. After that, make sure to stop by Main Street, which is lined with buildings built during a 19th century silver mining boom, where you can do some gallery browsing, souvenir shopping, and most importantly, whiskey tasting. The High West Saloon is Utah's first distillery since the 1870s and the only ski and gastro distillery in the world. It is an intimate gathering place serving small plates of Novu Western Fair and their own small batch mountain crafted award winning whiskies and vodkas. It all started with one man's passion to make a great Rocky Mountain whiskey. Proprietor and distiller David Perkins married his background as a biochemist, his love of bourbon and cooking, and his passion for the American West to bring the craft of small batch distilling back to Utah, of all places. Park City is an amazing destination with much to explore and phenomenal real estate for you to rent. Stay in a day or two and soak up the peaceful prairie horizon, the many lakes, the fishing, the local cheeses, whiskies, and so much needed downtime before embarking on an adventure northward to the great American outdoors. First stop on the way north was Bear Lake, which is evenly split between Utah and Wyoming, often called Caribbean of the Rockies for its intense turquoise blue water. It is a perfect place for a walk, a photo session, or a sunset. Unless you have more time to spare for other water activities.
sign on the great American open roads of the West. Never miss a farm store sign and the opportunity to support local farmers. This one had a self-serve, self-checkout vibe that was simply shocking to us and graced us with the most amazing thick yogurt we have ever tasted in fresh seasonal flavors like fig, honey and raspberries. And just like that, we reached Jackson Hole, another awesome American ski town, snuggled at the base of the mighty Teton mountain range in northwest Wyoming. The Valley of Jackson Hole offers an exhilarating taste of the wild, wild west in more ways than one. And what better way to dive into all that than with some truly authentic barbecue at Booba's Smokehouse. Jackson is an authentic Old West town where elk, moose and mule deer roam the streets and ranchers rub shoulders with ski bums and jet setters from around the globe. The Jackson Town Center has a lovely park where tourists take naps under the trees while wild mountain flowers fill their senses in the summertime. Do not miss on Wyoming's landmark watering hole, the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar. A famous meetup spot for bikers, the bar is made out of authentic Old West silver dollars and the seats are real saddles. Alright, enough towns and farms, time to experience the magnificence of nature. The drive from Jackson to Grand Teton is short and to say simply scenic is a massive understatement. I will never forget the first time the towering Teton range appears on the horizon. It simply leaves you breathless and scrambling to grasp its grandeur and vastness. The range's serrated peaks rising 7,000 feet are so perfectly proportioned, they seem born of a landscape artist rather than Mother Nature. Named by the French-speaking trapper who ventured through the region in the early 19th century, they are the youngest mountains in the Rockies and certainly the most handsome. Autumn brings stunning hues to the park's landscapes and provides ample opportunities for photography, wildlife watching expeditions, fly fishing, horseback riding and biking. And just as if this wasn't enough, the park astonishes you with its fjord-like lakes that are as picturesque as it gets. Most famous of which is Jenny Lake, named for the Shoshone wife of a trapper and adjacent to its equally stunning counterpart, Lee Lake. These two truly are the epitome of epic nature.
And to top it all off, on the other side of the park are the iconic locations like Mormon Row and the Molten Barns, which are so unique and stoic in their desolateness. They are truly a photographer's dream. On our sunset drive back, we were impeded by some good old bison traffic, a daily occurrence around these parts. And just when one thinks that nature cannot at all inspire further, one enters Yellowstone National Park. Words here truly become futile, and where they end, splendidness begins. The endless forests, the grand canyons, the rivers, the waterfalls are just a scratch on the surface of the unsurpassed nature boasted in this park. Home to an incomparable combination of natural beauty, rugged wilderness, majestic peaks and abundant wildlife, as well as the world's largest concentration of geysers and thermal features. Marvel at a volcano's hidden power, rising up in colorful hot springs flowing into lakes, sapphire blue pools, smoky forests, hot rivers, mud pots, and erupting geysers. The most famous of which is Old Faithful, undoubtedly the world's best known geyser and most publicized natural phenomenon of any sort. It is also one of the most predictable geysers in all of Yellowstone Park. The unique features do not stop there. One of my favorite spots was the wide forest and the loop drive that surrounds it. I have truly never witnessed such otherworldly setting, including this geyser with a view that feels like the edge of the world. Do not miss out on the terraces of Mammoth Hot Springs on your way in or out of the park. Wildlife spotting along the road is almost guaranteed, especially towards the late afternoon. As the sun approached the horizon, we headed towards the Great Prismatic, the largest of the hot springs in Yellowstone. The center is an intense azure blue. The hot water produces algae to grow with colors ranging from orange and green to golden brown. Of course, colors will change seasonally, but we highly recommend coming during sunset. The pinky hues and the smoke against the setting sun are simply mind-blowing.
After a few days of soaking up some of the best nature has to offer, we headed to one of the most sensational and open and wild states, Montana, where every road stop can easily turn into a natural photoshoot studio. We stopped by Helena first, and even though there are plenty of cute bakeries, impressive church buildings, and charming small-town neighborhoods, I would like to draw your attention to the Mercantile Coffee Shop. Extensive tea selection, unique gifts, handmade bath products, stickers, badges, posters, mugs, and most importantly, the most phenomenal coffee west of the Mississippi. You will not regret a little rest up here. Helena is the capital city, so some of the state buildings are also worth a visit. Montana is a true playground for those who love the outdoor adventures. Our drive graced us with the straightest roads and the widest skies we had ever seen, which definitely explains the nickname Big Sky Country. The landscape alone will continue to change throughout your drive as you move from one spectacular spot to the next. The lakes, the mountains, the prairies, it's hard to go wrong exploring this wonderful state. The next stop for us was the bustling town of Whitefish. Here you will trade in vast sweeping views for a classic small town America experience. Named one of the top 25 ski towns in the world by National Geographic, it is as low-key as it is glitzy. The entire downtown area is all locally owned, so you will not find any big box retailers to spoil the atmosphere. We discovered one such local gem that left us wanting to come here again, just to experience its mouth-watering food. Bonsai Brewing Project offers locally crafted beer flights, open grill concept, and a dog-friendly beer garden feel. Surprisingly, their tuna bowl was as good as it gets. It tasted as freshly caught as having it on a Hawaiian boat straight from the ocean. Staying at Whitefish is an extremely convenient home base for exploring Glacier National Park. Coming here late October, we caught tremendous fall foliage everywhere along the way, but unfortunately made us a bit late to the party here. The park was almost entirely closed and infamous glacier hikes and vistas were off the table.
We were especially disappointed that we couldn't get to drive the legendary Going to the Sun Road due to some major storm warnings. We did, however, manage to make the most of it by enjoying the famous lodge and Lake McDonald with its popular colorful rock shores. Driving south from Glacier National Park through the string of small towns of the Montana Bitterroot Valley can take you weeks if you decided to savor the charm of each spot and the tremendous nature surrounding it. After passing Florence, Hamilton and Victor, there is a notable stop right outside of Darby, the famous Yellowstone Ranch from the cult Kevin Costner show. Once we crossed over to Idaho, the rain turned into snowy turns, surprise ski mountain in the middle of nowhere, which turned into picturesque hills, canyons, and truly the most gorgeous sunshine-filled river gorge. A slight GPS mishap led us on a scenic detour through real cowboys, dirt mountain turns, and our own going to the sun road. Yes, it was a bit scary at the time, but in retrospect, I can't think of a more memorable way to get into Sun Valley. Off the beaten path, you will find a small ski town where extraordinary is a step in any direction. Sun Valley is where Above and Beyond describes more than just the landscape. There are a lot of great ski resorts in the United States, but none can match Sun Valley's rich winter sports history. This was literally the nation's first destination ski resort with the world's first chairlifts, where the very idea of the American ski vacation was born. Sun Valley changed the paradigm and immediately became a hotspot for the biggest celebrities, the most important VIPs, and the world's best skiers, and later snowboarders, and they have all been coming back ever since. This helped create the resort's swank luxury image, and A-list celebrities of the period flocked here. Regulars including Clark Gable, Marilyn Monroe, and Ernest Hemingway, who wrote his classic For Whom the Bell Tolls, while staying for several months in the resort's flagship hotel, the Sun Valley Lodge. It features a park-like garden surrounded by Swiss-style Gestalt and St. Moritz-inspired buildings, awesome restaurants, unique boutiques, and overall phenomenal faux alpine atmosphere. The winter wonderland Sun Valley experience is unmatched, but the fall colors we were rewarded with go beyond the power of anybody's eloquence. Even though Sun Valley is more understated than glitzy and it has a rural flair with a fiercely self-sufficient mountain spirit among the locals, the Hollywood trend never slowed. Sun Valley skiers include Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hanks, Justin Timberlake, longtime fan Clint Eastwood, who filmed Bale Rider here, and longtime homeowner Bruce Willis.
We had a long way back home from Sun Valley, so a stop by Twin Falls was a must. This wonderful Idaho town hosts the Perrine Bridge, which carries US Highway 93 over the Snake River Canyon. The Canyon Rim Trail is 7 miles long and has some great vantage points. The town is famous for the Shoshone Falls, often called the Niagara of the West. These falls put on a show in spring and early summer when water flows are at their peak after winter snow melt, but they were unfortunately dried up at the time we were there. During high water years, the falls attract thousands of out-of-town spectators who come to witness nature's awesome power. Subscribe to our channel for more awesome travel videos and remember, time is travel.